evening, everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> Wonderful. We are so happy to have you here. Welcome to campaign's presentation tonight in Elderson Auditorium, where we're going to offer you the best presentation possible from my campaign students out there. Yeah. William Allen White School of Journalism and Mass Communications is so proud of our students' hard work throughout the semester. You are about to see their presentation tonight. You'll be wowed by their wonderful tactics. You will be excited by the potential possibility of implemented by our clients, Kansas Action for Children. Before our finale tonight, I would like to welcome Dr. Ann Brill, Dean of the School of Journalism and Mass Communications, to give a welcome remark. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Everybody's breathing and relaxed. Okay, I have three important jobs tonight. If you have one of these, even if you don't have a KU, turn it off. Okay, silence your cell phones. Thank you. Um, my second important job is to welcome you on behalf of the School of Journalism and Mass Communications and the University of Kansas. It is a great pleasure and privilege to host these um, and to see all of your faces. And by the way, you all look wonderful. And Lauren, one of our alums, hey Lauren. Always good to see our alums out there working and being successful and coming back and giving back. So thank you for that. Thank all of you from Kansas Action for Children. Um, and my third job is to kind of do a little recap. I only have 16 pages of notes, so I'll try to talk fast. No, just kidding. <laughs> Strategic campaigns is, is really one of the highlights of the year. Um, for me, it's, it's really second only to our scholarship event where even better, we give away money. So, but it's really a highlight because we get to honor um, all the work that you students have done and to welcome families and friends, um, mentors, people who have really meant a lot to you throughout your, your careers here. And I look back and I, I remember a lot of you guys as freshmen. And here you are, just wow, juniors, seniors, ready to go out in the world. It's wonderful. And this is really a capstone experience. And I hope it has been for you know you for that for you. And I, I know it has because Professor Chen is so very good at that. You know, building up from where you first came into the J School and we started talking about your role in society. Wow, to be communicators and to be professional communicators, what a privilege that is and what an exciting life you all are gonna have with that. You know, and then you think about all the experiential learning that you did in the last few years. You experienced things hands-on. You got to do things. I mean, that's again what a professional program is all about. Critical thinking. You know, um, we've been talking to a lot of employers in the area over the past two years as we've opened the agency, and the number one thing they keep telling us that they're looking for in new employees is that ability to think. Critical think. Think your way through, around, solve a problem, right? And that's what you did here today. You're helping Kansas Action for Children solve an issue for them. And that's what employers say, boy, you can solve a problem, we want you to work for us. Um, you think about all the written and oral communication skills that you've learned, presentation skills, and those of you in the audience, wait till you see how smooth they are. Even when something goes wrong, and by the way, we do have two technical experts in the back, wave. Yeah, so no problems tonight. Think about the research that you've done. And again, that's something that, you know, 30, 40 years ago in um, the field of strategic communication, it was mostly creative. And now it's completely flipped. And people say, you need to know how to gather information, disseminate information, analyze information, and then share it with others. And again, that's a skill you've learned here over the past few years. Students, you know, this really is a model for what your lives are going to be. You know, if you liked campaigns, chances are you're going to like what you're doing. And please do it well for the next 50 or so years so that I can collect Social Security and your parents can collect. <laughs> You've got long, long careers ahead of you. And so do what you love and love what you do. You've heard that before. So thank you, everyone, who's brought the students to this point, and especially Professor Chen. Thank you so much for all the work you do to prepare these students. Um, and now just enjoy the presentations. And one more big, big thank you to the client. Thank you for coming here, for involving our students in what you do. And I know they've had a lot of fun because I've seen all the smiles and laughter and a few <coughs> teeth grinding too that's been going on the past couple weeks. So everyone welcome and thank you especially. Thank you, Dr. Ann Brill. One semester countless days and hours, 
in Stoffer Flint 206. <laughs> countless trips of visiting child care providers, countless trips of staying up late at night, staring at your screen, thought about how can I be more creative? <laughs> of course, all of your hard work really represents how much you care about our client and the mission our client really believe in. So I would like to take this moment to really say, introduce our clients so that for people who know very little about our client's organization can get a, bit, um, a little bit better understanding. I would like to welcome Lauren Beatty, Communication Directors of Kansas Action for Children. I would like to welcome Hillary Gee, Director of Health Policy. I also would like to welcome Amy McKay, Executive Director, Kansas Center for Economic Growth. Finally, I would like to welcome Danelle Brasington, Vice President of Administration of Kansas Action for Children. Without your dedication, support, and believe in improving the lives of Kansas children, it is not possible to really come up and conceptualize all of these campaigns for our students. So thank you again for what you believe. And I hope that tonight our students will make you very, very proud. Without further ado, it is my honor to introduce our very first campaign presentation group, Volcanic Communications. When directors Lauren Beatty and Hillary Gee came to speak to our class, they presented us with the problem of childhood obesity in Kansas. We learned that this is a big problem with no quick fix. The goal of the video we just showed you is twofold. The first is to create a sense of urgency in the state of Kansas to address this problem. And the second is to show how one person can take small steps in order to address it. We have had a semester of work to make a cohesive campaign that will make positive, healthy changes in the food and beverage environment for Kansas children ages zero to five. We are Volcanic Communications, and we stand here today proud of a semester of work and excited to show you a campaign we truly believe in. I am Emily Hess, the account executive. Jack Esberg is our creative director. Tabitha Binder and Sarah Lamphier are our strategic communication directors. Caitlin DeJong is our plans book and presentation director. And I'm Tom Whitler, research director. 
Before Emily and Jack delve into campaign specifics, we would like to give you a brief overview of the extensive secondary and primary research discovered throughout the course of this semester. This, you'll have to bear with me, it may seem a little dry, but this information is important as it builds the foundation of our campaign. To start off, obesity prevention has been found to be the most effective way to combat the childhood obesity epidemic. Unlike obesity intervention, obesity prevention works to instill healthy food and beverage practices in the, uh, during a child's formative years, thereby preventing things like obesity from ever becoming an issue. Uh, since this has to take place during the formative years, children ages zero to five are the ideal target. For children ages zero to five, there are around 200,000 in the state of Kansas. These children are best reached through the primary influencers in their life, that being their parents and their child care providers. In the state of Kansas, there are around 30,000 of these children enrolled in a family child care home. Due to the lack of food and beverage policies and regulations applicable to this particular environment, the providers at these family child care homes are the ideal target for a campaign that wants to create a large positive impact. In the state of Kansas, there are around 4,600 family child care home providers. These providers are heavily active on social media, specifically Facebook, and videos have been shown to be an effective means of communicating a message to them. One of Kansas Action for Children's partner organizations, Child Care Aware of Kansas, or CCA, is going to be very beneficial in reaching this target audience. Interviews with Star Robinson and Marie Trichel from CCA uh, taught us that these providers care deeply for the children they look after. However, they sometimes lack the proper nutrition education. They said that if these providers were to receive this education, they would work quickly and enthusiastically to implement the correct changes to their practices. This is why our campaign looks to form a partnership with the Kansas Child Care Training Opportunities, or KCCTO. Linda Logan of KCCTO said she would happily work with KAC to implement vital nutrition education into the classes and programs they currently offer to child care providers. Our secondary and primary research also found a very beneficial government food reimbursement program called the Child and Adult Care Food Program. This reimbursement program gives money to providers who serve healthy food to the children in their care. Our focus groups, our interviews, and an in-depth observation led us to the conclusion that this reimbursement program is very beneficial and convenient for family child care home providers. However, due to some common misconceptions regarding the program, only about 70% of our target audience is enrolled. This is a number that we would like to see increase. It would be a mistake to think that providers are the only audience that needs to be addressed. Our research showed that children actually tend to eat better when in child care than they do in their own homes. For this campaign to be a true success, we are going to need the full buy-in of parents as well as providers. A media survey conducted by Volcanic Communications showed that parents can be effectively reached through radio and television advertisements. Radio, parents tend to listen to the radio during their commute to and from work, and a television advertisements would best be placed during the primetime hours on one of the big three networks. Our media survey also showed us that parents prefer to communicate with child care providers either through email or through social media. So with all this in mind, I'm going to turn it over to Emily and Jack, who will discuss the specific tactics that make up our campaign. So let's imagine that someone who hasn't exercised in 20 years hires a personal trainer. This personal trainer is not going to tell him to run a marathon the next day. If he does, he might just send him right back to his couch. What he's going to do is suggest a walk around the block. And then they're going to build on that step by step until one day maybe a marathon is possible. That is the goal behind our Think Big, Start Small campaign. It is an integrated multimedia platform that has advertising, social media, public relations, education, media advocacy, and partnerships. And we know that it will create positive changes in the food and beverage environment for Kansas children ages zero to five. So obesity is a serious issue, but we really wanted the tone of this campaign to be upbeat and encouraging. Colorful design and icons really convey the foundation of our campaign, which is healthy eating. For our typefaces, we chose a strong serif like Museo Slab, coupled with a thinner font like Gotham, which we really think makes the logo jump off the page. We're really excited how this turned out, and we think it visually encapsulates the heart of this campaign. Our 2015 Think Big, Start Small content calendar provides a cohesive plan with consistent messaging ready to be utilized by Kansas Action for Children. We want our target audience to have a memorable experience among all social media platforms and not be confused about the information that they are receiving. The content calendar essentially acts as a roadmap for this campaign, really guiding the creative and messaging throughout 2015. As you can see here, each month has been assigned 
a different theme based on a holiday, event, or season. We'll walk you through a couple of these to kind of see how it works. For example, in October, we really focus on the idea that fast food is, is scary. Halloween is here, and the scariest monsters this year are burgers and donuts. Learn to keep a healthy diet during the candy month. For the first month of the campaign, in January, we really focus on starting off the year on the right foot. A lot of people look to sort of start new habits or kind of have a resolution, which we really think is important. This piece on the left-hand side is taken from our newsletter, where we take a big issue and really break it down into a small step where our target audience can have an active impact on what's going on. So if you look up on top, you can see that a typical four-year-old consumes about 65 pounds of added sugar each year from unhealthy drinks. That is a massive amount, almost as much as a four-year-old weighs. So a small step for really improving that statistic is to drink a cup of water in the morning with breakfast instead of juice. Moving to the right side, we've developed a series of web posters for each month that we think will be really important. These are simple and designed with parents in mind, and again, break down a big idea into a simple step for improving it. We designed some of these for October because we thought it'd be a really fun month to mock up with Halloween. Again, these are designed with parents in mind, and we think that it's a great opportunity to be creative and have some fun. On the right-hand side of the page, you can see, sweets can be scary. Did you know it would take a walk from Kansas City to Topeka to burn off all of the calories from the candy your child collects on Halloween? This year, consider giving out healthier alternatives like pretzels, granola, or popcorn. Think big by starting small. And these will all drive to our website, which Emily will talk about right now. So our website will have curated content, including healthy eating advice, easy recipes, and expensive meals. It will feature bloggers, videos, and more. It will also be linked with the theme of the content calendar for each month, as Jack just talked about. Yeah, so you can see here that this website is mocked up with January in mind. Again, that same fact is at the bottom. The website is really the first step in our campaign and really an important building block in the strategy of it. Uh, like our logo, it's simple and really designed uh, with the user in mind. Since we read from left to right, we utilize a Z pattern layout where the most important information is in the top left-hand corner as your eyes move across the page and finally rests in the bottom right-hand corner where there's a link to our Facebook, a place for feedback, as well as contact information. In addition to the website, when users first visit it, they'll be prompted with this. Ideally, we would like them to sign up as well as connect with us on Facebook. Developing this first communication line is really important for the duration of our campaign. We've also optimized our website for mobile, which we found to be a key insight, as a lot of our target audience is using their smartphones to access information online. So we found through a, so a media survey that our target audience spends a lot of time on social media, and specifically Facebook. When Lauren came to talk to our class, she talked about your previous success with Facebook platforms for, unique, for your unique initiatives, and we wanted to continue with that success. So here you will see a mock-up of our Think Big, Start Small Facebook page. Um, some of the curated content you'll see is, this is showing you how to make uh, healthy meals with three ingredients, and it will show you 51 recipes. So the goal is really to make this transition to a healthy lifestyle easy for parents and providers. It's also going to work as a way to drive people to our website. So we will have a link to our actual Think Big Start Small website. So digital advertising is something that's becoming more and more important in today's world. Internet and ads now account for 21% of advertising dollars. We found that this is a really important part of our strategy, and we need a lot of eyes on this space. Currently, KAC runs no digital advertising except for Facebook, which we do believe is an effective method at gaining a following as well as measuring awareness. So we also plan to implement a strategy through Google AdWords. Google is a massive platform and processes over 12 billion searches a month. It's really important that we're in with this space. For our AdWords campaign, we will be taking on three goals. Increase online traffic, solicit email signups, and promote events. You can see here that AdWords are displayed on the top of the page as well as the right-hand side of the search results. This is a great system because it's cost per click, which means we only pay when someone clicks on the ad. Google also has extensive targeting and analytical tools that can ensure that our budget is being used effectively and that we are having the largest return on our advertising dollars. There's a comprehensive strategy for implementing this AdWords campaign into, in your plans book. You're also eligible to apply, apply as a nonprofit for a Google grant, which we would highly suggest doing. This would provide you with $10,000 of AdWords credits a month. It's competitive, but we think you're definitely capable of garnering this type of support. So one of the ways that we're going to use Google AdWords and our Facebook advertising is to create awareness about our event. In an interview with Christy Spencer, who is a news director at KOAM News, she said that the best way to create um, 
earned free media is through an event. So we suggest that you partner with um, Oregon Museum of Science and Information to host their Eat Well, Play Well exhibit in the Exploration Place in downtown Wichita. You can see that this exhibit is interactive and kid-friendly. It's also bilingual and provides a lot of healthy information for parents and children. One of the reasons we want you to have your exhibit in Wichita in the months of May, June, and July is because during this time is one of Wichita's largest community events called the River Festival. It sees almost 400,000 people per year, and we think that this will make um, your event even more newsworthy as well as generate more impressions on the exhibit. For our radio spot, we really wanted to do something that captured the issue from a child's point of view. We often don't consider that it's not necessarily our generation that's affected, but our children's. We were able to recruit a really cute kid who Sarah babysits to put this spot together for us, and he did a fantastic job with it, so we're excited to show you. Mom, did you know that big people like you might live longer than little kids like me? Three out of ten children in Kansas are too big. Today I learned that you can help me be strong like Superman. Sometimes I don't like to eat my vegetables, but thinkbigstartsmall.com has recipes that will help me like them more. How about we make a change, Mommy? What do you think? Parents, check out thinkbigstartsmall.com to learn more about the small changes you can make that will create a big difference in your children's lives. So as you can see, everything we've done up to this point has been upbeat and inspirational. However, we did want to include a component that really captured the seriousness of this issue. For our video, we tell the story of two children, both born in the same hospital. One goes on to live a healthy lifestyle, while the other does not. We see their lives play out until eventually they are reunited in hospital again. This time, one has become a doctor, and the other is on the operating table, suffering from a heart attack. This is something that we're really excited about. And using YouTube's dual video playback function, we'll be able to seamlessly integrate both reels into one interactive experience. The viewer using the space bar will be able to tra transition between both walks of life and determine which one they want to watch and for how long. Let's walk through a mock-up of this really quick to kind of get a picture for how it would work. Please excuse the stock photography as this is something that is a mock-up right now. We have been in contact with a few production companies in Kansas City that definitely say it's feasible and they're excited to get started. So you can see here, both children are starting at the same point in life, next to each other in the same hospital. They both go their separate ways, and one is living an active lifestyle, making healthy choices, while the other is not. So one night, the doctor's asleep, and he gets a phone call. And someone suffered a heart attack and is being rushed to the hospital. The doctor gets in his car and is on his way. And this is really where the whole idea comes full circle. And the two babies that started out in the hospital are reunited again. We think that this is a really creative way to kind of visualize the small changes that can make huge impacts throughout a lifetime. Uh, this will also be cut into a 60-second television spot that will air across the state. Uh, however, we are very excited about the digital portion as it's very unique and we think it is something that does have viral potential. So all of our tactics up to now are for providers, parents, and some just for general public awareness. Now we're going to focus on the last couple tactics that will just be for child care providers. So through our research, we found that each child care provider is required five hours of mandatory education every year. One of those facets of education is child development. Kansas Child Care Training Opportunities has agreed to partner with Kansas Action for Children to develop nutrition content to put into these classes. Kansas Child Care Training Opportunities saw 10,000 providers in 2013, and we believe this is a perfect way for KAC to tell providers that they can have a big impact on the food and beverage environment for Kansas children ages 0 to 5. In an interview with Star Robinson, she said that providers respond really well to incentives. So Think Big, Start Small incentivizes these classes by giving one person in each of the first 20 classes a $100 gift card. Another thing Star Robinson said 
is that providers tend to feel isolated because they spend a lot of time with children. So one way that they stay connected with adults is through social media. Um, so we suggest that Think Big Start Small campaign makes a Facebook group for providers, which will um, Child Care Aware will send out to all the in-home child care providers. This will be a way for KAC to directly interact with them and also to uh, reinforce some of the things that they, are, they have learned in the training opportunities, such as the government food program testimonials or cool activities they can do with their kids that day that will teach them nutrition information. Um, it's also a way that the providers can interact directly with one another because they really are the experts in this field. So as you can see, our um, campaign has a lot of moving parts and we did dip a little bit into your expendable fund. There is a breakdown of all of this in our campaign's budget, but we really believe that every penny is worth it and um, will make the changes that you want to see made in Kansas. So as we said before, this isn't a problem that can be solved overnight. To run a marathon, you have to start with a walk around the block. And this campaign gives our target audience the steps they need to make these big changes for Kansas. We are Volcanic Communications, and this is our Think Big, Start Small campaign. To show our, oh sorry, real quick. <laughs> to show our appreciation for allowing us to work with you this semester, we did get you a little gift. Um, it is a basket of Think Big, Start Small branded apples. They are safe to eat. Um, in the basket, you will also find our plans book as well as a flash drive containing all the different video and multimedia components of our campaign. Um, our research shows that apples are healthy, so we thought that would be a good way to kind of tie everything back. Uh, and with that, we are open for your questions. That is so cool. <laughs> uh, we found this logo design company in Kansas City that it's a laser and it just like peels off the very first layer of skin after you implement the logo into the program. So, yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about the timeline of this campaign? Is it year long, six months? Uh, yes, the time, it is a year long campaign. So different portions go, uh, get implemented at different times. So like, you can start working with Kansas Child Care Training Opportunities right away to get those classes, and then once they're ready, we can just get those out whenever. Uh, Facebook website would preferably be launched in January, as would the uh, Facebook and Google advertising. Uh, the Ewell Play Well exhibit um, is in the, months, the summer months, and we figured the radio and television ads would be best placed um, a couple months prior just to really start building a broad general awareness of the campaign. But uh, we have that content calendar, so it encapsulates the, the whole year. And there is a breakdown of that in our plans book as well. You'll see yeah. the flash screen there. I have two questions. I wanted to know um, where you found the research about parents communicating with providers through email and, and uh, social media. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Um, that was actually from a media survey that we conducted. Uh, it was taken by 77 Kansas parents with children in the age range of zero to five. And it was just one of the questions. <laughs> That's new since I had a little one, so I was just <laughs> curious about that. And then the other question I have is, KAC staff, we have a small staff, and the idea of having direct, direct interaction with providers on the Facebook page is a little daunting. Have you had any thought about how that um, Facebook page might be more interactive or self-propelled by the providers, or do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I would say that if, so it actually is gonna be linked with our content calendar as well. So the stuff that you're putting on um, the website and the Facebook page just for gen the general public and for parents is can also be generated to providers as well. And this curated content I th can happen like once a week. And then I think that providers will um, just rally around it and really want to interact as well. I have one other question. So I didn't see any uh, re recognition, I guess, of KAC in any of your materials. Our, our logo wasn't on the site, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so I thought, I wondered why, if that was a conscious choice or what was behind that. Um, when you came to class, you said that sometimes you like to stray away from directly being involved with your campaigns. So that's something that we did. And it's, your logo can be put on the websites very easily if that's something you want to be 
known that you're doing, or if you want it to stand alone, it can do that as well. Because I wonder otherwise um, if people would wonder who's behind this. Yeah, they prob yes, I think it would be good. We, we've talked about that. We talked about putting your website, I mean, putting your logo on it for credibility. And then we also said that that could be a decision that you guys could make, whether or not you wanted it to stand alone or be um, in conjunction with KAC. Thank you very much. A good teacher basically will go through all the lineups, take a look at the content, and see what's going on. How can I make this whole presentation a smooth one with no apparent glitch? How are you feeling so far? <laughs> How are you feeling so far? Come on, everyone. Thank you. And I told you, our client is going to ask tough questions. So I hope that, the, you know, our four other groups are ready for our next round of tough questions. And take your time. We do have ample time to grill these students. <laughs> well. It's my honor to introduce our next group, Capstone Creative. This is the group that has been working really hard this semester. You do not know how many meetings I met with them and what I've told them yesterday. And this morning, they finally blossomed. So we're very, very proud of them. <laughs> it's a good way. Come on, everyone. We're really, I'm really, really proud of their work. And there's a reason why they're going to, they're really proud to introduce mm -hmm. you what they have. So let's welcome Capstone. Creative. Welcome KAC and a special thank you to Professor Chen for all of the support and guidance that you've given us throughout this semester. We'd like to thank uh, the KU faculty and everyone else for joining us this evening. My name is Monica Wynn. And I'm Rebecca Boffman. The other very smart and attractive people of our team include Caitlin Johnson, Warren Buckles. Lily Sanders, and Lee Lytle. Together, we make the dedicated, innovative, and dynamic team Capstone Creative. What we're presenting to you tonight is our mission for nutrition. This was a strategic campaign that we created specifically for you to help fight the childhood obesity rate by improving the child care environment when it comes to the food and beverages. Here is the concern that ignited our mission. Currently, one in three children in Kansas are suffering from childhood obesity. Children who suffer from childhood obesity are not only more likely to be obese as adults, but they're also more likely to suffer from other health risks, including type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and several types of cancer. A child's dietary habits are learned early on, and, and these habits can affect their growth and development. It's up to us as adults to make sure we provide the best opportunities for our Kansas kids so that the habits they are developing are healthy. And with furthering the education of parents and child care providers, the rate of childhood obesity is something we can reduce over time. But first we needed to know what the root causes of childhood obesity are. And there's a lot of information out there, so it was really easy for us to find and identify the problem. What we found out is 27% of a child's daily caloric intake for kids ages 2 to 18 comes from nutrient-poor foods like chips, candy, and other snacks. Sugary drinks will add an additional 11% to that number. And it's easy to see why. Sugary drinks from companies like Coca-Cola, Gatorade, and Pepsi spend billions of dollars in their marketing tactics to get consumers to buy their products, they specifically target low-income families and minorities, too. 
So once we were able to recognize how aggressive their tactics and strategies are, it allowed us to really shape and develop the campaign that we wanted. To better understand the relationship between parents, child care providers, and a child's food and beverage environment, we used two different methods of primary research, starting with our child care observations. During September and October, we observed different child care providers in Kansas City. While these providers had a genuine concern for the health of the children in their care, lunchtime and snack time proved to be more stressful parts of the day. And here is where we found areas to improve. We found one of the providers served fruit juice and powdered lemonade several times a week. While this isn't as bad as soda, the added sugar is something we would like to see child care providers try to avoid. In addition to this, only one of the providers put an emphasis on water consumption. The other providers were more concerned with the consumption of milk, probably due to the fact that it's more widely known for its nutritional value for younger children. In another observation, we noted a clean plate was rewarded by animal crackers, chips, or pretzels. These snacks are very high in sodium. However, the providers struggled to get children to eat their vegetables. So an incentive like this was an easy way to get them to finish what was on their plate. Cookies, pastries, and cinnamon rolls were also commonly provided as snacks. Now that we had a better idea of the struggle child, child care providers faced on a day-to-day -day basis, we needed to look at the other issue in our campaign. So the other half is finding out how child's mm -hmm. dietary habits are at home. And for that, we reached out to MOPS groups around Kansas to help us with an online survey so that we could get a better understanding of that. So some of the things that we found out from our results directly correlated with some of the observations that we made in our other primary research. 76% of parents reported that their kids were more than willing to eat fruits. Well, there's no big surprise there. And we can assume that this is because of the sweetness factor of it. Vegetables, on the other hand, had a stark difference in that only 33% of kids were willing to eat vegetables. Overall, the survey concluded that parents are concerned about what their children are eating when they're not in their care. And this allowed us to find more enticing ways to help parents and child care providers get, get, to get kids to eat more vegetables and to consume more water. And this is where our mission for nutrition begins. We wanted to reach the people with the most direct influence on a child's food and beverage environment. Child care providers are our main focus because in the last 30 years, the child care setting has replaced the home as the prime learning domain for a child's dietary habits. Parents, of course, are another important audience to our campaign because they help reinforce the healthy habits learned during the day. Currently, our campaign is structured to reach the cities where we found most of our survey feedback. These places include Kansas City, Overland Park, Lawrence, Topeka, and Wichita. These six cities alone make up one third of our state's population, so we felt this would be the best way to reach the largest amount of people in Kansas. We see two goals that are crucial for completing our mission. The first is to promote healthy eating habits among children. We'd like to do this by increasing, the, by increasing children's willingness to consume vegetables and encouraging children to become interested in what's on their plate. Our second goal is to increase daily water consumption. We, can, we see that we can do this by decreasing the consumption of sugary drinks and increasing the accessibility of water in child care settings. So going back to our mission for nutrition, the strategies and tactics that we're going to share with you tonight are really going to enforce and promote the healthy eating habits and choices that a child has, while at the same time decreasing the sugary consumption of drinks because we want children to get excited about the choices that they have, and we really hope that the choices are healthy. And as parents would know, healthy and happy children make for a much easier life for those care providers as well. So one of the things we're gonna touch on is picky children. But before we get into that, we'd like to share with you a short little video of what it's like on a daily basis for small children when it comes to eating healthy.
So there's no doubt that these kids are super cute, right? Super cute. But the reality is, is this is very true for many parents. And if you're those parents of those picky kids, you probably don't think that that's cute at all. So how we wanted to deliver our message across Kansas was by creating a series of print ads that are going to be published in major markets like Kansas City, Topeka, and Wichita. As you can see here, we wanted the print ads to look cohesive in design, yet have a fun and educational approach to them. The major publications in these markets have over a 300,000 circulation. So we know that the message we're conveying has a wide reach across the state. But with new foods, we know that there come new challenges. And picky children will become picky adults because I can tell you I'm a walking, talking example of that. But I assure you there is hope for even the smallest children. I am getting better. Because life is tricky when you're picky, but 10 is the magic number. Experts say that after a child rejects a new food, they are likely to accept it if they are exposed to it 10 more times. Enforce the one bite rule by having your child take a bite of each item on their plate. And encouraging healthy eating habits at a young age will help set the foundation for a health, healthy lifestyle. And one way that we're going to help child care providers enforce the one bite rule is by providing 200 customized stickers to act as a reinforcement and positive incentive for kids and to make that more of a common practice in the child care setting. So let's get to the fun part of our mission. We've spent a lot of time focusing on the, the adults involved in this, but let's remember who this is really about, our Kansas kids. Part of what makes snack cakes, sugary drinks, and fruit snacks so appealing for tiny picky eaters are the recognizable characters attached to these products. We're not ever gonna see Dora the Explorer endorsing Brussels sprouts. So this is what inspired us to come up with the faces of our mission. We considered frequently served vegetables in the childcare setting. So carrots, tomatoes, asparagus, broccoli, and corn. Oh, and just so everyone is aware, corn is not a vegetable. It is a grain, in case you didn't know. Thank you, Monica. And of course, let's not forget another healthy element we're trying to push, water. I'd like to introduce, after some playful and serious brainstorming, we came up with our super fresh friends. I'd like to introduce you to our leaders, Captain Carrot and Wonder Water, and of course, the rest of the bunch. Corny Carl, Broccoli Bruce, Alan Asparagus, and Tina Tomato. Let's take a closer look at Tina now. Tina Tomato is chatty, sassy, and loves to dance. To salsa music. <laughs> because tomatoes have seeds. <laughs> They're actually fruits, but that's okay. Tina doesn't mind standing out from the bunch. Tomatoes are rich with lycopene. Lycopene keeps our bones healthy and strong. We want strong bones so we can keep dancing, just like Tina. To incorporate the super fresh friends into the childcare setting, we will distribute pamphlets to providers with nutritional information for each character along with a description of their colorful personality. In these pamphlets, providers will also find a link to our Pinterest page, which includes coloring sheets for children and recipes for each vegetable and grain. We will also distribute character bookmarks with the same information for children to take home and share with their parents. In addition to this, our vegetable of the month plan highlights each super fresh friend with a themed craft and recipe. Even more crafts and recipes can be found on our Pinterest page, Nutrition for Kansas. When we spoke with the child care providers and parents, a lot of them mentioned that Pinterest is a site that they visited often. As you can see here, our Pinterest account features different boards that highlight separate aspects of our campaign, including our super fresh friends, healthy eating, and of course, hydration. So our next plan of action, we drew inspiration from our friends at A to Z Daycare. And what we came up with was a hydration station. And for this, we sought the help of our friend, Wonder Water. The way this is gonna work is a child care provider will have a specific area that's designated where they can line up all of the sippy cups that a child brings in and put it within reach. Children will be encouraged to drink more water by coloring in the Wonder Water sheet with every cup that they consume. And once Wonder Water has been colored in completely, they will be again rewarded with the incentive of the 
Wonder Water sticker. This was an easy way for us to get children to drink more water and at the same time be really cost effective because this costs zero dollars basically. Um, because we know that studies show that Kansas kids don't drink enough water and water is essential for life, calorie free and thirst quenching while providing necessary nutrients for growing children. And making a hydration station available is an easy, to, easy way to ensure kids are getting the necessary amount of water each day. And this way, child care providers can have full access to water 100% of the time for children. So kind of rewind and touch back on the MOPS groups that we had mentioned previously. We really want to emphasize that this group is crucial to the success of our campaign because they have been reaching millions of moms for over 40 years. And the cool thing about this is we wanted to take advantage of the numbers that they have by interacting with them on their Hello Darling website. This website has a following of 100, over 100,000 subscribers, including another 65,000 social media followers. On this site, we're actually going to highlight KAC describe their mission and really enforce the issue and drawing the concern about childhood obesity. And to engage with mothers a little bit more, we also included a tips for moms. And this was something that we come we came up with that's just really easy ways to get children to have a more hands-on approach with the food that's going to end up on their table. So that kind of learning is really what we were trying to push. Really easy ways, like if a child's old enough to go with you to the grocery store, to let them help pick and choose some of those fruits and vegetables. Or if they're at home and you want to give them more responsibility by letting them set the table or letting them wash the fruits and vegetables that you're going to end up putting on their plates and ending up in their tummies. So all of this material is going to go into a follow-up email for all of the subscribers to that because we really think that the alliance that we have with the MOPS group is an important one, and we're really proud to actually have established that. So what we've presented to you this evening is simple. For decades, the food and beverage industry has pumped billions of dollars into marketing sugary drinks and snack foods. As a, re as a result of this, we have children who believe happiness comes with a Coke and a side of fries. <coughs> Capstone C Creative is putting a fresh spin on tried and true ideas through our mission for nutrition, by finding ways to effectively address the obesity issue in a society that is highly concentrated with poor food and beverage choices. However, we know that the decision starts in the home, the decision to make this change starts in the home and child care environment. But we know that childhood obesity is a big issue. But we at Capstone Creative believe that starting early and reaching those that have the biggest impact and the most influence on a child's dietary habits at an early age is really the way to go. So we found this opportunity for KAC to build stronger relationships with those parents and those child care providers across the state. So we're asking you now to join us on our mission for nutrition so that together we can help make this a healthier place to raise our Kansas kids. Thank you. Why did you guys decide to start a Pinterest page? Um, like we discussed um, in our child care observations, we asked them what sites they used to get inspiration for the recipes they used to serve the children and the crafts. Um, and they all said that Pinterest was something that was a way they stayed connected with other child care providers, um, as well as the MOPS group. They also suggested Pinterest. So um, I'm with the Kansas Center for Economic Growth, so this is not my world, but I partner a lot with Kansas Action for Children. And one of the things I was curious about was, <clears throat> I know that you pick the six areas based on population, um, but it leaves out a significant portion of the state. And I'm a native Kansan who grew up in a more rural part of the state, not one of those six areas. So I'm a little curious, did you look at all on the breakdown in terms of where obesity is a greater problem? Those areas are also sort of resource rich, and so I'm, I'm curious if that came into consideration when you're thinking about your target. It did. One of the things when we were distributing the survey, we really wanted to try and reach those Western Kansas families. 
we just weren't getting the kind of feedback there. So what we decided to do was hit these target audiences or these cities really hard and kind of establish a, a base so that we can maybe tweak those tactics or those strategies for those um, harder to reach areas out in Western Kansas once we actually got this fully developed like we wanted it to. I have a question about distribution of this curriculum is what it seems to me. Um, have you had, do you have any ideas around how you would distribute the curriculum to parents and or child care providers to get, the, to get it in their hands? That is a really great question. When we spoke with our child care providers, they tipped us off to Daycare, Daycare Connection as the main network that they use for all other uh, child care providers. So we're still in the process of really developing that relationship with them, but we have been making contact and um, we're hoping that will come to fruition pretty soon. Could you talk a little bit again about MOPS? I think I missed what that is. Uh, MOPS stands for Mothers of Preschoolers. And what's really cool about that idea is they are all over the place. If you really, now that you're aware of it, look at your local churches and almost everyone that I have driven by has some sort of MOPS location and they meet um, once or twice a month and get together. So this is really something that was already there that we, uh, we felt that we could really tap into pretty easily. So it's a group that meets yes, in different Yes, but locations. these are people all over the nation. And, but they get a national, or they get a course, a coordinated. Uh -huh. They have their home headquarters in Denver, I believe, somewhere in Colorado. Um, but yeah, they have different, different places in several MOPS locations within just neighborhoods and cities alone. And then I had another question about the print ads. Um, are those appearing in newspapers, or where are those appearing? At? Yes, in those publications like the Kansas City Star, Wichita Eagle, Topeka Capital Journal, um, the major publications of those cities. I, I wondered too about the Western Kansas areas and purchasing ads in those papers, and did you think about that or consider that? Not yet until we really wanted to lock something solid down because we know that that's going to be a little more difficult so we want to make sure that we have everything set in stone before we bring on more challenges and um could you talk a little bit about the budget that is completely listed in full on our plans okay. book so if you have you can refer to that okay <laughs> thank you thank you so much Perhaps I shouldn't tell my clients, ask difficult to answer questions. <laughs> but this is the caliber that I wish all of my students would know. This is the tough world and our client is bringing you something real to a classroom setting. So I'm really, really happy to hear these tough questions and I hope the rest of the three groups are prepared. Maybe you can go easy on them a little bit, our client. <laughs> And yes, and I'm gonna give you some time to reference your the budget for this group. And can someone from Capstone Creative to move the table to the side? It is my pleasure to welcome my third group. JH6 Solutions. <laughs> Hello, we are JH6 Solutions. We are a marketing and advertising firm that specializes in creating effective yet innovative solutions that meet the needs of our clients. My name is Camden Bender and I'm the presentation director. My name is Lauren Relihan and I'm the plans book director. Hi, I'm Sarah Lipson, I'm the strategic communication director. Hi, I'm Jordan Minster and I'm the account executive. Hello, my name is Taylor Zart and I'm the creative director. And good evening, my name is Paul Pierce II and I'm the research director. 
Before we get started, we'd first like to thank Kansas Action for Children for allowing us to work with you. We'd also like to thank Director <laughs> Gee, Director Beatty, Executive Director McKay, and the Vice President of Administration, Brasington. Next, we'd also like to thank the William Allen White School of Journalism and Dean Brill for providing us with the valuable resources that we implemented throughout the semester. Finally, we'd like to thank Dr. Chen and our TA, Ellie Wright, for providing us with multiple instances of guidance throughout our campaign. Upon receiving KAC as our client, J.H. Chick Solutions decided we needed to do further research to better understand the issues associated with childhood obesity and how it affects Kansas children. We'll now play a video that explains some of the key findings that we had from this information. As you can see, childhood obesity is clearly an issue not only in the United States, but sp specifically for the children here in Kansas. Before we can conduct a strategic campaign, the next part of our research um, indicated that we needed to have a better understanding of our target audience and the environments in which they interact. Paul will now speak on some of these issues. So before we can de describe a campaign that will reverse the childhood obesity trend in Kansas, we first had to identify what the lifelong consumption habit behaviors were of children aged 0 to 5. After speaking with Jennifer Wagner, who is the curriculum director at Hilltop here in Lawrence, Kansas, she told us that children develop their lifelong habits in three stages. While all three stages are very important to the future behavior of children, we're going to focus on the first two stages because they pertain directly to children aged 0 to 5. The first stage happens from birth to two years old, and at this stage, children are very receptive to what they see and feel. In the second stage, ages 3 to 7, children are receptive to their outside influences, such as other children, their caregivers, and the media. So understanding how the children's childhood develops happened, we first had to figure out what the primary caretakers were of those children. So our research told us that adult caregivers are the biggest impact on children aged 0 to 5. From there, we had to identify which caregivers, whether it was parents or childhood providers. And according to our research, family child care providers have became those adult caregivers that have the biggest impact primarily because children aged 0 to 5 are spending more and more time with their family child care provider due to their parents' work schedules. So after we understood our secondary research and figured out the development habits of children and then who had the biggest impact on those children, we then led to our primary research. We did this first by conducting focus groups. The first focus group was with nine center directors from around the Lawrence area, and the second focus group was with three family child care participants. During our focus group with our center directors, we learned that they reaffirmed our secondary research. So basically, the child, the, the primary caregiver has a big impact on children aged 0 to 5. They also told us that child investment is a good strategy to try to get children involved in their consumption habits. This is something we really hinged on, and we thought it was a really cool idea. So you'll see how child investment plays throughout our campaign. When it came to the family child care provider focus group, we also learned that picky eaters is something that we'll have to come across when trying to get children to try new and healthier foods. They told us the best practice for that was to not bring attention to the behavior, therefore not giving the behavior a habit. And they also told us that the more invested they are in making their own plate, the more willing they will be to try their own food. So after this focus group stage, we decided to conduct some authentic field research through one-on-one -on -one interviews. We first interviewed CCA coach Star Robinson. Now Star Robinson 
works for Child Care Aware of Kansas, which is another nonprofit organization that works with center provider and center directors throughout the state of Kansas. As a coach, she has the absolute awesome ability to influence people who will then influence our target audience. So she was a great resource to us. In her interview, she told us how social media is the best way family child care providers communicate. She also told us that simplicity is key and that you need to be able to educate and get something exciting to children, but in a simple way. Also, we decided to inter interview several family child care providers around the state of Kansas. Our interviews told us with family child care providers that kids really like to get involved, reaffirming what we heard in our focus groups in the beginning. They also told us that demonstrations, food demonstrations and events are a big way that providers enjoy interacting with each other because they long for that face-to-face -face interaction with one another. So after we figured out what the best way to go about determining who the primary child care providers were, we decided to target family child care providers as our primary target audience. And yes, Kansas children age zero to five is our ultimate audience, but you'll see how it comes full circle later in the presentation. So this is the map that CCA coach Star Robinson gave us, and this is how we started our demographic and psychographic research. As you can see, there's four regions throughout the state of Kansas, and what we found statewide that demographics of child care providers is the same. Most child care providers are younger to middle age, typically white women, and they make around $30,000 a year. They also have six to 10 children in their care at a time, and they have minimum free time because they work hours that typically expand past the hours of their parents. Psychographically, we found that child care providers are the same no matter what region they're in. We found that they genuinely love their children, they want to see their children do well, and they enjoy interaction with other providers. They also use social media, especially Pinterest and Facebook, to find out new ways to get curricula and activities to do with their children. So while we just said that family child care providers are the main caregivers to children age zero to five during those crucial development habit years, we st our research still tells us that parents cannot be overlooked as the primary guardians of these children. So after all of our research and looking at that region map that Co Coach Star Robinson gave us, we found that these are the two major types of families in Kansas who have children age zero to five who use family child care providers. The first type of families are sustaining families. And these are our parents who are typically younger than 35, they use their high school education to get blue collar jobs, and they use those wages to sustain mobile homes and apartments. They also drive pre-owned vehicles, and they like to shop at discount stores, such as uh, Family Dollar. Mainstream families are our other type of families who are closely related to the middle class. They are typically 25 to 44, and they use their college level education to sustain white collar jobs. They also use that wages to, <clears throat> they also use their wages to stay in middle level homes, and they shop at places such as Old Navy and buy their groceries in bulk. So after all of our research, understanding how childhood obesity has become a trend in Kansas, going to the development habits of how children develop those habits, and then understanding the primary influences on those children, we came up with these three major takeaways. First, that adults are key influencers on children's consumption habits. Second, that the food environment that surrounds our children is crucial. And third, children must have an active role in their consumption habit development. We are confident that a strategic message that has these three cornerstones as the base of a campaign will positively influence the consumption habits of children age zero to five in Kansas. Moreover, we, we are excited about the stuff that we have developed and we really think that'll be exciting for you guys. So I'm gonna pass it off to Sarah and I'll let her explain how our campaign transitioned from the research phase to encouraging children to play with their food. Okay, Jordan has a little executions kit that she's gonna give you all. And you can reference this throughout this portion of the presentation if you wish. So as you may have guessed, the overarching initiative for our campaign is called the Play With Your Food Initiative. And so we understand that KAC is a small organization, so the campaign that we've created we feel is realistic and manageable, yet effective and impactful. So the Play With Your Food initiative made us think about the child care providers in Kansas. Their jobs are hands-on all day, every day. They're very busy, and trying to get them to change their practices could seem like a daunting task. What the Play With Your Food initiative is supposed to communicate is that preparing simple, quick, and healthy meals can be painless and fun. We also want our initiative to encourage providers to get children involved in the meal preparation. As Paul said earlier, getting children involved in meal preparation is a great way to have ownership over their own food. 
It increases the likeliness that they'll want to try new foods, which can help combat the picky eater problem. It also allows them to work with the providers and learn about the healthy foods that they're about to consume. And that education from our research showed us that those lessons will stay with them for a lifetime. Not only that, um, but the Play With Your Food initiative will allow providers to get interactive with the children and teach them everything they could need to know about the healthy foods. Overall, it's supposed to be fun and playful, so it's something that we're excited about. We crafted our goals based on the initiative, so our first goal is to solidify a partnership with Child Care Aware of Kansas, which we've heard about a couple times today. But if you forgot, they're a nonprofit organization that works with child care providers across the state of Kansas. So they have a close link with the primary target audience that we're suggesting. So we know that you already work very closely with them, but we recommend doing a year-long partnership with them just so we can help them pass on information to the providers and be a great outlet to communicate. The second goal we have is to educate family child care providers on healthy food and beverage practices that are simple and require a minimal time commitment. And our third goal is to also educate parents on the importance of their children's consumption habits. So this is going to be the first touch point that any child care provider will have with the Play With Your Food initiative. As you can see, the front of the brochure will say some simple, fun, healthy, play with your food. And then on this side near me, play with your food, and it describes a little bit about what the initiative is and some tips to get them started. On the other side of the pamphlet, we have a couple of facts that are going to just really solidify the fact that childhood obesity is a problem in Kansas. In our focus group, we found out that a lot of children that are zero to five do not show any signs of obesity yet. So they said, as providers, they don't see the problem in their facilities necessarily at the moment, but they do know that it's a problem as the children grow. So this will just help solidify the fact that although the children may not be obese yet, it's definitely a problem that needs to be addressed. And in the middle, we have a fun play with your food snack recipe that's peanut butter banana sushi. It's banana, peanut butter, and a whole wheat tortilla. So that's a great recipe to get them started in thinking about the play with your food initiative. And then lastly, of course, we're going to invite them to join the conversation on the Facebook and Pinterest page that we'll talk about later. The next tactic that we propose is a series of four interactive events. So there will be one for each of the regions that we use with the Star Robinson map that Paul talked about earlier. And so we recommend sending these invitations to 150 providers for each of those four regions in hopes to get 75 attendees at each event from each region. So all they have to do to RSVP is email playwithyourfood at gmail.com. And the good thing about that is that those who RSVP, you can utilize their emails to start a database for any future contact you would need with child care providers in those different regions. So that being said, the event has a lot of different components, but the part we're going to focus on tonight is the interactive cooking class. That's kind of the big portion of the event. So we recommend, obviously, a simple, fun, healthy meal that's taught by a nutritionist or culinary instructor. And we imagine having around four providers at each table working together along with the instructor to complete the meal. And throughout the meal, the instructor will be telling them different steps that the child could get involved with the food preparation. So they'll start getting that play with your food element, not only for themselves having fun interacting with each other and making the meal, but they'll start to learn about how they could get a child if a child were there involved with the meal preparation. They'll also make them understand the importance of the healthy meal and why they should be focusing on the healthy meal preparation. And at the event, we, well, we alluded to this before, but some of our experts told us that the best way to get providers involved and to even want to attend an event like this would to make sure it be interactive and engaging and fun. So that was the theory behind that. We propose promoting this event via this personalized Facebook page. When you talked to our class, you said that you had done that before with initiatives and it had gone over well. So this Play With Your Food Facebook page, as you can see, the cover photo has been changed to promote the event. You could change the profile picture if you wish as well. And here's a sample post that would just be an example of promoting the event. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and read this post for you, just a promotional <laughs> one. And it says, don't forget about our upcoming Play With Your Food interactive cooking class coming next month. And I'm sure the likes will go through the roof with this kind of guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, In our plans book, we also have a detailed timetable of the event schedule and when the promotion should happen. So it's spaced out very well to know when you need to post on Facebook to promote the events and when invites go out and things like that. Um, but the Facebook page is going to serve as more than just a promotional tool. 
Um, as we said earlier, and we learned from Star Robinson, they utilize Facebook and Pinterest to not only find recipes and curricula, but to interact with each other. So that's what we want this page to serve as. So this sample post says, be sure to check out our Pinterest page for simple, easy, and fun recipes to get your child involved in healthy eating. So then this link would, of course, click through to the Pinterest page, which would then have more recipes and this specific recipe if they wished to see it. So at the end of the event, we're going to encourage the providers to pledge to play with their food. And that means that they would be pledging to prepare one healthy meal a week with the help of the children that are in their care. So as you can see, we're wearing our Pledge to Play stickers. There's some in your kit and it's up on the screen. And so we aren't only going to incentivize them with a sticker since they are adults. Um, we are going to also <laughs> enter them into a drawing. And that drawing consists of four grand prizes. And those grand prizes will be a $500 gift certificate to a grocery store and a $150 spa gift certificate. And then there will be eight secondary prizes that consist of a $375 gift certificate to a grocery store. And so then we will break the drawings down for each region. So there will be one grand prize winner for each region and two secondary prize winners for each region. Um, our research showed us that a lot of times healthy food can be perceived as expensive and most often it is more expensive than the unhealthy alternatives. So we hope that after the event, if they know that they could potentially get the ball rolling with a gift certificate to a grocery store, that they'd have more incentive to pledge to play with their food and try to do one healthy meal a week with the help of the children. And then also we found out that sometimes child care providers feel underappreciated. So that's where the spa element comes in and hopes to pamper them a little bit while also inspiring them to make some healthy changes. This is going to be the takeaway for our event. It's one of our favorite elements of well, mine at least. But this is the Play With Your Food cookbook. And so as you can see, the Play With Your Food element is still there, encouraging them to have the children help them out with the meal preparation and also to cook healthier meals. So the cool thing about this recipe book, as you can see, there's two little hands next to two of the steps under the directions. So that icon means that that's a step that a child could help. So Paul, if you want to read one of them for an example. Yeah, sure. It says, allow the ch children to wash off the vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> it gets more and more into it as you go. Know. As, as you can see, the more the children are, the more steps involved. So it'll, it'll expand a little later. Yeah, so the icon but on the wait, right that more. Paul alluded to is the level of child involvement. So the last one was low level of child involvement. might be better suited for a three-year-old, someone a little younger. So still, they're getting to touch the food, see it, and get some ownership of it, over it. Um, so this one has high child involvement, which means that they're obviously involved in both steps. And this is a snack, so it's something a little more simple that they can really get involved with. And then um, this is another element. So we propose in our cookbook there are five breakfast, five lunch, and five snack recipes. So overall, that's a full week of childcare. So when they take this home, they can really get started on the initiative. They don't have to go find the recipes on Pinterest. It's already there for them. So hopefully they've pledged to play. They have this recipe book as a toolkit, and they can go home and get started with the hopes of winning a huge gift card. Um, and so this one, you can see, this is a black bean and cheese quesadilla. So not all the ingredients in this um, meal are going to necessarily fit the CACFP guidelines, which is Child and Adult Care Food Program guidelines, which Paul talked, I don't know if you talked about that earlier, but maybe. <laughs> um, and so those are guidelines that some child care providers do already follow, but it's just a good guideline to help have a balanced meal. So even if they're not involved with those regulations, we based our cookbook off of that. So it's kind of small, but on the bottom we have of each recipe, we have suggested sides. So even if the actual recipe doesn't have all the elements they need, we have suggested sides so that they could add those elements in, and then it's a full, complete, well-rounded meal. The last tactic that we'd like to discuss is our parent recipe card. We did not forget about the parents. Um, as we have discovered, family child care providers do take a, spend a lot of time with the children, which is why we found that they were our primary target audience. But when we go, they go home, we want them to still play with their food, and we want the healthy eating to continue. Therefore, this recipe card on one side will have a recipe that the child will have prepared with their child care provider that week. The provider can give this recipe card to the parent, and it will also open up the conversation about healthy food and beverages and their children's consumption habits. And on the other side of the card, it's going to introduce what Play With Your Food is. And on the other side of the card, it reads, What we've been up to at daycare, playing with our food. What's that? Play With Your Food is an initiative all about incorporating children into the meal preparation process. Your child has been helping me out in the kitchen while learning about healthy food and serving sizes. Play with your food at home and try our fun recipe on the other side of this card. 
for more recipes, tips, and testimonials, head to the Play With Your Food Pinterest page and like Play With Your Food on Facebook. So we know that parents that have to send their child to full-time care miss their kids. They want to hang out with them. They want to spend time with them. We found that out in our research. So we figured that this would be a great way to encourage them to spend time with their children while also making a healthy and positive change in their child's overall well-being. As you can see, Play With Your Food is designed to give people ownership so that we can actually move towards reducing childhood obesity in Kansas. And to accomplish this, we made sure that Play With Your Food made three, met the three major criteria that we established. These criteria is that child involvement is key. For, child, for children to change their habits, they need to take ownership in this. They need to feel like they're having a choice, so that's key. Um, also, we wanted to make sure that the tactics were realistic and effective for KAC. Finally, we wanted Play With Your Food to be simple, fun, and an educational campaign. With that, we'd now like to open the floor for questions. So um, you didn't talk about water consumption that much, and I wondered why not. Yeah, we we thought about it, and if you look in our re in our plans book, we have that outlined in our research about water consumption and the best practices to do that. So there's absolutely room in our campaign for it. So it can easily fit in with the Play With Your Food mantra. We also found in a lot of our research that child care providers had great access to water. And I think that it all obviously is something that should still be encouraged. But from a lot of the interviews and observations that we saw, it was more battling the sugary beverages rather than encouraging them to drink water. So it is something that I think is important. But also, as Paul said, in our research, we kind of outlined further our reasoning behind that. After the event with the cooking demonstration, how would you anticipate maintaining change among providers and um, continuing interaction? Yeah, well, we have a whole timeline in our plans book, and so it's kind of outlined there. But our campaign is kind of meant to tell a story. So it starts with the pamphlet, and that's the first initiative that, or first way that they hear about the Play With Your Food campaign. And the event at the end is kind of the culmination of it. So we're hoping that by the time the event actually occurs, they'll have a, enough exposure to the event, because there's some other elements and tactics that are in the plans book that we haven't spoke about tonight. But um, we hope that by the end of the event and the pledge to play, that they're so ready to implement these activities that they will. And then for continued engagement, we're really going to utilize the social media for that and hope that they've created networks through the social media and by meeting each other at the events that they're going to want to continue and hold each other accountable and themselves accountable. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't started talking, right? I'm a little bit jealous on this side. Maybe I can talk with two. Does it make me a little bit more <laughs> prominent here? I'm a bit jealous on this side when J to Six Solutions handed out all these beautiful, beautiful boxes, and I heard the tissue paper ruffling, <laughs> flipping things. I thought that's an early holiday for our client, and I hope that you are feeling the same way as I do. We heard about observations, in-depth interview, focus groups, and surveys. These are just some of the tactics that I encourage our students to go out and conduct their own primary research. And I told them, even if you only have seven participants, maybe seven MOPs participants, I'm still very proud of you because you know what? It is difficult to really try to recruit and survey those hard to reach population and busy moms and busy providers. And as you can see, our students did their best. They built great partnership with our with other organizations. They delivered hard. They did everything they can do to try to get the numbers up. And I'm really, really proud of you. But wait, there are two more. We have two more presentations. We're going to take a five minute intermission. Please. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Wait, it's okay. Please be back by 7.30. 7.30. Okay, I'll give the seven minutes instead. <laughs> but please be back by 7.30. Yes, you can leave now. It's okay. <laughs> be back. Two more. Is take a while to 
she just needs to go into her pole. Yeah, right. just open it. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Love that natural silence is a way to indicate it's time to sit down. I'm gonna wait for a couple more students to come back. So meanwhile, take your time eating cookies and drink water. I hope. are still here, my students and our clients. So I had a little chat with some of the attendees who asked me questions about the campaign, one of whom was very curious about why don't you target physical activity. It could be some of the questions you have in mind, especially the, those people who are just joining us online, you may have that question as well. Our client would really want to target the food and beverage environment in particular. Therefore, physical activity is not part of our plan. Though we do not deny its importance in facilitating a healthy childhood lifestyle. <laughs> the second thing is, one of, uh, one of the participants commented that, I'm so happy you didn't make your students present with a note card. Of course. Chen students never, never <laughs> present with a note card. But it's okay, you can look at the screen and, and point. So like I mentioned, can someone help me close the door so that we can keep our secret? Thank you, Professor Sol, I really appreciate it. <laughs> T 
two more presentations. Two more presentations. Yes. I don't know. Where did you get the energy? <laughs> so clearly, I'm, maybe I'm doing a good job here. I told the fourth group, fan media, that I really want you to open our second half. Think about second half, right? Your score is this, and we want our second half to start strong as well. So please give a warm welcome to fan media. Good evening and thank you for joining us. As you can see, we were lucky enough to be in an all-female group, which is absolutely our strength. This is a group of intelligent, confident, and driven women who have come together to bring Kansas Action for Children an incredible campaign. We are Fem Media. My name is Megan Green and I'm the creative, creative director. My name is Danny Brady and I'm the research director. My name is Lainey Logston and I'm the account executive. I'm Elizabeth Urker. I'm one of the strategic communication directors. And my name is Crystal Hong, and I'm the presentation and plans book director. My name is Laura Fagan, and I'm the other strategic communications director. From the beginning, we knew we wanted to target Kansas in-home child care providers. These are women who spend their entire day with children. They're loving, energetic, and playful. And we knew we wanted to incorporate this in our campaign design. I created the hexagon design that you will see in our plans book. The hexagon design encompasses the playfulness of our campaign, and the colors you see are also featured in our campaign logo, which will be revealed later in the presentation. Our campaign design shows our care and understanding for the target audience, as well as the children who will ultimately benefit from this campaign. Thank you, Megan. Skipping over what you, our client, already knows about your organization, I would like to target KAC's three primary factors data and research, advocacy, and public policy change. These three aspects are vital to KAC's success. So over the past several months, Fem Media made sure that the steps we took fell logically in place with these three services. I'll start by telling you who we're talking to. Through primary and secondary research, Fem Media concluded that childcare providers as well as parents would be our primary target audience. We chose to target parents because we found that an overwhelming majority of parents already support reg regulations for the food and beverage environment. Moving on, we then targeted the state of Kansas. We targeted nine major cities. From lightest to darkest, we could see the smallest to the largest number of child care providers in each area. We, tar we will target four major cities, Wichita, Topeka, Lawrence, and the Kansas City area for our main events, which Crystal will talk about later. Moving on, here's Lori. Lori is a child care provider from Wichita with over 22 years in the business. Fem Media got the privilege of getting to know Lori through qualitative research. After watching four kids from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., Lori is exhausted and finds most of her pre free time primarily on the weekends. In order to be able to effectively communicate with people like Lori, Fem Media knew that we would have to integrate our new knowledge with our collected research, parallel it to similar campaigns, and tailor our own efforts with informed and sound decisions. The challenge presented in front of us was clear. Fem Media was going to have to outshine direct competitors vying for legislative attention, create a unique brand to be distinguished by her, bu by her busy target audience, and link that brand with the services offered by KAC. We then see obesity as a state issue. From primary research, we found that a majority of parents agree that obesity is a state issue. But moving on, we could see the chart on the left in which less than one third of parents believe that it is personal problem for their family, except for in Wichita, where the concern was deemed much higher. In order to address these concerns, we will utilize parents who believe that their behavior as role, model, as role models infects it, affects their child's behavior, as well as social media, which was deemed the preferred communication method through primary surveys. We then, we know what has to be done has to be done right now, because currently one of, out of every three Kansas children are overweight or obese. Primary research showed us that a majority of parents believe sugary beverages are suitable alternatives to water. 
And because our children in Kansas are spending a substantial amount of their formative years under the care of our primary target, target audience, we knew that what has to be done has to be done right now. To summarize what we found, we will target our primary care givers as well as parents and, <laughs> I'm sorry, we will target our primary audiences, our current trends, and we will educate them and intervene as soon as possible. All right, so now that you understand the research, we can tell you that Fem Media came to several conclusions based on that research. First of all, we know that the parents and providers that we're targeting genuinely care about the children that they are impacting. They care because either one way or another, they're their livelihood or their offspring, and they are what make their lives full. We also understand that they're busy people and that the reason that they may not have the information necessary to provide the most healthy options for their children is because they don't have access to the information about that kind of healthy food and beverage consumption. If we want this message to be reached and ultimately impact children in Kansas, we need to make it fun. That way, parents, providers, and children can all be involved in the process. Finally, we want all of the individuals who are impacted by our campaign to come away with an understanding of KAC's goals as the ultimate, <laughs> excuse me, as the ultimate outcome we seek is to impact legislation. So how does that look in terms of a campaign? High five for health, a helping hand for Kansas kids. Here we have our campaign logo, which is the primary representation of our campaign. We believe that it is exciting and accessible as well as interactive for parents, providers, and children. We love the fact that a high five is representative of camaraderie, youthful excitement, and a job well done. The number five represents the five behaviors that we hope our parents and child care providers as well as their children will begin to adopt. Those include drinking water, eating well, being a role model, telling a friend, and supporting KAC. So as far as bringing the campaign to life, we have several goals. First, we want to create awareness and bridge the knowledge gap that exists. We'll do that by educating parents, providers, parents and providers so that they can encourage water consumption as well as healthy eating habits. That looks like our strategies, which include branding a strong message as far as High Five for Health is concerned. We want to make this an engaging experience for everyone involved. We don't want to be pushing this information on parents or providers. We want it to be an experience that they are a part of. We'll do that by using a variety of media to meet them where they are in a way that communicates that we understand their busy lives and are accommodating of that. We will utilize in-person events as well as social media and radio ads, which are a little bit of a more traditional tactic for us. So as we begin, we're going to start by talking about our website and Facebook, which are kind of the hubs of High Five for Health. Crystal's going to go into a little more detail for us. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. So obviously, the High Five for Health website is the online hub for the High Five for Health campaign. It will feature individual sections for each of the five behaviors that we are encouraging our participants to adopt. Those sections will include information and resources to make those behaviors fun and easy to add to their everyday lives. Additionally, there will be downloadable as well as shareable resources that including, I should say, including infographics, fact sheets, conversation starters, and of course, coloring sheets for the kiddos. A key point about the website to keep in mind is we will integrate a specific legislation call to action, which we'll describe further in the campaign later this evening. All right, let's look at Facebook. Now, of course, Facebook will be our social media hub for the High Five for Health campaign. We chose Facebook to be our primary platform because not only do providers use it to communicate with each other, but they use it to communicate with the parents of the children in their care. Additionally, families use Facebook not only to showcase their families, but also to keep in touch with friends and family members. Facebook is great for the cross promotion of all of our resources. For example, this particular post highlighting Kansas Action for Children's website itself. You see here it says, Hi Fi for Health is powered by Kansas Action for Children. KAC's vision is to make Kansas the best place to raise a child. Visit the website for more information on how you can support KAC. High Five for Health, a helping hand for Kansas kids. Additionally, Facebook is great for targeting specific audiences. Any of these posts, of course, can be labeled specifically for parents, providers, and the like. 
Additionally, one of our two paid advertisements that we suggest for High Five for Health is a Facebook ad. This one here is your simple promotion ad, which says want fast, easy solutions to keep you and your kids healthy and happy. High Five for Health has all that and more. You can be a helping hand for Kansas kids. Facebook advertising is great for not only boosting traffic to the Facebook page and the website, but of course, for raising awareness for the events that we will discuss later. Next up, we have one tactic that we're especially excited about. We believe it's a natural progression of the Pass on Pop campaign that KAC has engaged in this past year. The Drink Water Challenge, un excuse me, Pass on Pop, focuses on eliminating sugary beverages by encouraging participants to refrain from drinking soda on Sundays. The Drink Water Challenge takes a slightly different approach, but is a natural progression by encouraging increased water consumption. So the Drink Water Challenge does take Pass on Pop to the next level by not only encouraging increased water consumption, but overall participation in other aspects of the High Five for Health campaign. The three levels include simple behaviors like signing the Pass on Pop pledge, to participating in the social media contest, as well as attending educational events. The first level, Team Parched, will earn you things like High Five for Health stickers and buttons. Team Hydrated, the second level, gets you things like the branded High Five for Health, health lidded cup and t-shirt. And the final level, the grand level, Team Drenched, Specifically for child care providers who reach the team drenched level, they will receive a 23 cup filtered water dispenser provided for the High Five for Health campaign by Zero Water. This, imagine Lori, who Danny described earlier. She's able to engage with this drink water challenge via Facebook as well as the website. She's also able to track her water consumption using a smartphone app like Water Your Body by Android. And similarly, or additionally, I should say, she's able to start conversations with the children in her care, as well as with the parents of those children about why and how she's participating in this super cool challenge. Next up, we have the Eat Well Facebook photo contest. We believe this encourages several of the behaviors, not only eat well, but also be a role model and tell a friend. So the great thing about the Eat Well Facebook photo contest is that we are able to model the behavior in real life and then showcase it online. Of course, Fem Media is aware that there may be privacy concerns with a contest of this nature. The great thing is, the pictures don't have to include a friend or a family member. They can simply be a picture of a delicious meal that you've prepared or of a colorful tabletop filled with fruit and fresh glasses of water. If you'll look on the left, I have the four basic behaviors listed for the Eat Well Facebook photo contest. First, Lori, our target provider, would like the High Five for Health Facebook. Then she would email or private message her contest photos to High Five for Health directly. She would then share her contest photos with her family and friends in order to get the most likes. If Lori receives the most likes on her High Five for Health Eat Well photo, she will receive a $100 Dylan's gift card. The great thing about a contest like this is not only does it drive the visual traffic to the Facebook page itself, but then it also encourages these behaviors uh, in the real world outside of the computer. So as we alluded to the real world, as well as some of our events, or I'm, yes, events, <laughs> excuse me. Um, we're going to next talk about our Dylan's grocery store events. We really believe that this flagship tactic brings together all portions of High Five for Health. It allows for real life interaction and information about High Five for Health in general, as well as KAC. We chose to partner with Dylan specifically because they're not only a community leader here in Kansas, but they are also a comfortable place for parents and providers to go. Think about it. Lori's been with her kids Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. The only time she has to be in the place like Dylan's is on Saturday mornings or afternoons. Let's make it a fun, interactive engagement experience for her. These events will feature such things as High Five for Health recipe cards that will encourage her to purchase those items on the spot in order to fulfill these recipes for her children. They will also have things like a sample water um, in this 23 cup dispenser to show that drinking water can be fun as well as delicious, and coloring pages and crayons for the kids. Another great aspect of the Dylan's grocery store events is the special thought leaders who will be there. Mommy bloggers have been invited to these Dylan's events in order to not only engage with parents and providers on a personal level, but also to drive traffic to the Dylan's grocery store events by posting about them on their blog. 
Not only are these women going to be available for the communal aspect of the event, but they will also add that extra touch of credibility for the Dillon's grocery store events. Finally, we have our radio ad, which you'll hear in just a moment. We'd like to let you know that the radio ad that you'll hear is an announcement style ad. It's traditional and very similar to those that KAC has used in the past. We would also urge you to check out our plans book for a few additional <coughs> scripts that we believe will tell a story that's especially compelling to our target audience. The great thing about radio is that it allows us to reach everyone throughout the Cato, the Cato of Stanzas? The state of Kansas, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> What keeps your kids from eating well all the time? If time and cost are a factor, you're not alone. That's where High Five for Health comes in, providing easy solutions to help ensure that Kansas kids are healthy kids. For recipes, contests, and information about how to live a healthy life, visit HighFiveForHealth.com. You can be a helping hand for Kansas kids. Visit HighFiveForHealth.com. Thin Media suggests two types of radio flights for the High Five for Health campaign. One, of course, is your launch style flight, which would use an announcement ad like this right in May of the campaign year for two weeks all across the nine target cities that Danny mentioned earlier this presentation in order to raise the general awareness of High Five for Health. Additionally, we suggest event flights one week prior to our gr Dylan's grocery store events in order to drive traffic to those particular event locations. Radio, of course, is an easy tactic to implement, not only because you're familiar with it, but also because it's available across the state of Kansas, targeting those rural areas that we're most concerned about, and we can tailor it to the demographic and the airtime that we're looking for when it comes to our target providers and parents. So now that you've heard about our specific tactics, we hope it's become clear to you how they will help to implement those five behaviors we discussed at the beginning of the night. As you have seen, drink water and eat well are specifically enforced based on the two tactics that bear their names. But we hope that you've also seen how being a role model, telling a friend, and supporting KAC are ingrained throughout our campaign. We believe that by in, in, excuse me, engaging in these behaviors themselves, parents and providers are serving as role models to the children in their care. We believe that by posting on Facebook and sharing information with their friends from our website, they are telling a friend. Finally, they should be engaging with KAC throughout the process so that when the time comes toward the end of the campaign, they'll be ready to engage their support for specific legislative items. So let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk about a few particulars. First, the budget. As you can see, a full 60% of the budget is dedicated to radio and the drink water challenge. Radio, of course, needs the financial support to hit those nine target cities during launch, as well as the four hub cities during the Dillon's grocery store events. The Drink Water Challenge needs the financial support simply for the awesome prizes that are available to all the participants we know will be participating in it. The remaining 40% of the budget goes to swag items like t-shirts, stickers, buttons, crayons, and coloring pages. And then of course, to the media items such as Facebook ads and the media kit that you have in front of you. Now let's look at timeline. So we realize that KAC works on a limited staff and resources and time. So we wanna make sure to build in time for you to be able to plan and implement this campaign. If you see at the top left in gray, the first four months of the year, January through April, will be dedicated solely to the planning phase. We expect that the website would be completed by March, the Facebook and other social media profiles would be completed by April, highlighted in blue. You'll see the green tactics, which are your most money um, intensive tactics are labeled there, the radio and Facebook ads, as well as the drink water challenge. Those start at the true launch of the campaign in May, with the radio and Facebook ads going through September, and then your drink water challenge can of course be tailored to your time and resources. Then in red, you'll see your more resource as well as time dependent um, tactics. These were specifically scheduled for the summer months when you have a little bit more dedication to them. Dylan's events, of course, through June and September, those can be not only best suited to your schedule, but also wrapped around the back to school time for parents and providers. And then of course the eWell well contest in tandem, and those can continue through the rest of the year as well. And then lastly, as I hinted at before with the website, there is the legislative pop-up that would occur starting in October, 
all the way to the start of the legislative cycle in January, and this would allow any visitor to the website to select the agenda items that they feel particularly passionate about so that you, Kansas Action for Children, will be able to gauge the effectiveness of High Five for Health. So we wanna tell you that we care. We care because the providers and the parents want healthier, happier kids. And we understand that there are barriers like time and cost that can make this a difficult achievement. However, by having fun and making achieving our goals exciting and entertaining, we'll be able to make true impact. And of course, we couldn't do this without KAC because policy connects the dots and we expect our actions to lead to results. Thank you from FEM Media and we are ready for your questions. Um, I wondered if you could talk a little bit more about the transition from Pass on Pop to the Drink Water Challenge. We have about 3,000 people who took the Pass on Pop pledge, but not all of them are parents and not all of them are child care providers. So how would you capitalize on that group? Okay. Um, we do have a four-stage email plan outlined in the plans book for the Drink Water Challenge. The introductory email not only targets those new people who haven't heard of Pass on Pop or High Five for Health, but then a specific email to your Pass on Pop pledgers that would then introduce them to the next phase, which would be the drink water challenge. The great thing about that level one, the team parched, is really the activities involved are signing the challenge, or signing the Pass on Pop pledge, the original one, referring a friend, and it makes it easy to kind of move that transition from one to the next. ask another one. Um, so far you're the only group to address legislative change which we talked a little bit about in our client briefing as being sort of the year three goal whereas we we wanted you guys to focus on year two which is more about education so I wondered why you incorporated that and um, if you could talk a little bit more about why that was part of your plan. Okay, so that's definitely a great point. We didn't want the legislative action to be lost in the campaign, so we felt that it was a great way to kind of start having the conversation at year two. Obviously, you're not ready to make any major changes at this point, but that's why that pop-up is there toward the end of the campaign. Obviously, there's still another year before legislative cycle that you would actually be capitalizing on, but it gives you the opportunity to reach out to those people and determine who's interested in what so that you can continue engaging with them throughout the next year so that when you are ready to implement that legislative change, they're ready and waiting to jump um, behind you and support that kind of action. And what kind of actions would you encourage that, like what, if that was a website and it said take action, what would be listed under that? Like what do you envision these people doing as for legislative action? Um, I was just thinking, what did we do for that? Um, highlighted in your plans book, it shows that the um, particular legislative pop-up portion of the website will also include links to the legislators' Facebook pages so that we can encourage the behavior of communicating with the legislators via social media. And then it will also just um, build you up a database knowing the issues that each of these people are interested in and then of course their contact information. So we really saw, similar to how the Drink Water Challenge kind of bridges Pass on Pop over to High Five for Health, we see this legislative pop-up then being able to bridge High Five for Health over to the next initiative, whatever that may be. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Just out of curiosity, can I do a quick survey? So a lot of you are friends with each other during the semester, right? But somehow this semester, your friendship has broken up a little bit, just thought, so Darby, what's your campaign about? Asked Paul. <laughs> Darby say, well, we love campaigns. We love KC and walk back. Are you impressed by each other in a way? I mean, so for the first four groups, just really out of curiosity, have you thought about anything that you would have done differently in a way? <coughs> Some people are like, yeah, but no, we're still the best. <laughs> I love the 
our Crystal mentioned she loved the cookbook idea from JH6 Solutions. Yep. She loves the level of child involvement, and may I say, well, just really for the recording, recording purpose. I do have to repeat it. So who actually suggested that? The child? Yes, yes. Celebrate tonight for such a wonderful <laughs> tactic. Our last one, our last one. Our last one will officially mark an end of our wonderful journey together. But before getting emotional, I want to welcome MRS Degree. Come out stage. Hello and welcome for the fifth or sixth time tonight. <laughs> Before we begin our presentation, we'd like to begin with thanks. Thank you to Professor Chen, Ellie Wright, and the Journalism School for all of their guidance with the creation of this campaign. Thank you to Child Care Aware of Kansas for their help in our research process. And thank you, of course, to Kansas Action for Children for allowing us the opportunity to help improve the lives of Kansas children. My name is Darby Evans, and I'm the account executive. To my left, we have our creative director, Alexandra Malevsky. To my right, we have our Directors of Strategic Communication, Nikki Coppers and Jordan Johnson, our Director of Research, B. Trep Barr, and our Presentation Director, Paige Kavarik. Together, we are MRS degree, and we are all about engagement. Don't worry. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> Don't worry, though. We're not worried about rings. <laughs> We are too busy, <laughs> we're too busy finding revolutionary ways to connect brands with consumers. As an all-female advertising agency, exceeding expectations is what drives us. Rooted in research and guided by strategy, our work tells a story, elicits emotion, and inspires action. With all of that in mind, we could not be more excited to present our campaign to Kansas Action for Children. Today, you'll hear us talk a lot about obesity as an epidemic and obesity as an overarching problem. But when we were creating these ideas for you, we really tried to keep in mind what obesity would be like on an individual level for a child. A child with obesity might experience shortness of breath frequently, might be left out of games on the playground, might be self-conscious or unhappy. So while our campaign focuses on the health aspect of obesity, what compelled us to create the ideas that we did is the knowledge that we have the ability to improve the quality of life for each and every child suffering obesity in Kansas. As you know, we were given the task to engage child care providers in the state of Kansas to create a healthier food and beverage environment. The intervention is key now because 11% of calorie intake in children is sugary beverages and portion sizes are larger than they've ever been before. We have three primary target audiences that we focus on in this campaign, coaches, child care providers, and moms. We also have two secondary audiences, children and legislators. Our three primary target audiences are all different, but they share something in common. They care deeply about children, and they want these kids to grow up to live long, healthy, happy lives. First up, we have child care aware coaches. The typical day for one of the 36 child care aware coaches in the state of Kansas is busy. They're commuting to and from their office to the sites where their clients are. They listen to the radio on the way to work as well. They communicate with these child care providers on a consistent basis with at-home visits and over the phone and email. Also, these providers have, are these, uh, sorry, these coaches are great advisors to these providers. Providers often ask them for advice on how to handle day-to-day -day children situations. Next up, we have providers. Providers are also busy. They work 50, hour, 50 plus hours a week, yet they earn less than $30,000 a year. <coughs> It's very, with this in mind, it's very key to, to keep in mind that they respond to free incentives and information. Also, they take pride in their work. They're very passionate about the children they care for. One thing we found in our research is that it's very important to uh, connect development of the children with the importance of eating healthy. Moms are also busy. 
Moms tend to work entry-level jobs and are very financially conscious. These mothers also are, need help planning meals. They know what it's like, they know what healthy foods are and stuff like that, but they do not understand, uh, they don't want to spend the time to organize meals. They don't want to spend hours at the grocery store looking for healthy options. They don't want to plan meals. They want to spend time with their kids and to relax at home. In order to make our campaign really strive, we need to be able to make it more organized for them. Also, moms look for tips online. They're constantly online. And according to our research, 89% of mothers check uh, internet, social media sites at least twice a day. Also, they communicate frequently with providers to check on the status of their children. Of course, even though our tactics aren't geared specifically to our secondary audiences, we have secondary audiences. Our ch first of all, children. Children learn from the environment that surrounds them. Uh, they mimic adults, they mimic their peers. They are learning while um, just living their lives. It's important that surrounded in a healthy environment. Also, in order to really get to the children, we need to have them engage in the food preparation process and have them know how much fun it is to eat healthy. Finally, we have legislators. In order to appeal to conservative legislators, we need to show them how much obesity is costing and how this uh, campaign can actually lower those costs. Uh, the uh, average year, America spends $147 billion on obesity-related illnesses. We really need to convey that back to uh, legislators in this campaign. So summary of key findings and what we recommend. We need to give coaches free resources, which they can then give to the providers. We need to save the providers time and money when it comes to eating healthy. Um, we need to have parents join children at meal times so they're surrounded in a healthy environment. We also need to have moms more organized when it comes to healthy decision making. We need to include children in food preparation and provide activities to reinforce these healthy ideas so that they're engraved in their mind. And finally, we need to stress how expensive and deadly obesity is to the state of Kansas. All of this led to the conception of our campaign, GROW. GROW isn't just a word or a set of instructions or a compilation of pretty colors and pictures. Grow is an idea, and it's a lifestyle. What grow is is so much more than the sum of its parts, and because of that, we know that it will change the lives of Kansas children, because when you're healthier, you're happier. Grow is a simple, upbeat, informative plan for child care providers to provide their children with healthier foods and healthier beverages throughout the day. It also offers suggestions on how they can take care of themselves better, and it, helps, it offers suggestions on how children can try healthier foods that they might have not liked before. The GROW campaign will start in September of 2015. It's important that it starts in September because this coincides with National Childhood Obesity Awareness Month. The campaign will conclude in September of 2018. In its entirety, your campaign is going to cost around $40,000. In our research, we learned that child care providers respond most to positive, fun imagery. It's therefore important not to demonize obesity, but rather to show healthy eating in a fun and positive light. With all this in mind, I would like to talk for a moment about the visual strategy behind your campaign. As your creative director, I have had so much fun with the GROW campaign. Every font, every color, every graphic has been thought out very carefully and chosen for specific reasons. Your header and um, logo copy is in Futura, a timeless Swiss typeface known for its readability. Its form follows its function it's highly readable, but it's also fun when it's set at different weights, as in your GROW logo. Your body copy is set in Garamond, a beautiful, historic typeface that's widely known for being one of the most readable fonts. Garamond is also an economic choice because it uses less ink than its more ubiquitous counterpart, Times New Roman. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> All of your colors are unique, consistent, and carefully thought out. Though providers are mostly female, the children they work with are male and female. We thought it was important to reflect this gender diversity in the colors. The colors are gender ambiguous and reflective of the lively, playful spirits of the providers and the children that they watch. Finally, your graphics. All of GROW's graphics, uh, these are just a few examples up here, have been hand designed using your same custom GROW colors. These graphics are fun, they're eye-catching, they're engaging, but they're also clean and clear, making them highly professional. We believe that all of your target audiences will respond well to these graphics. Our goals and objectives are spelled out in depth in our plans book, but for the purposes of this presentation, we chose to discuss them in a more broad manner. 
Our goals are in three phases. The first is awareness, the second is behavior change, and the third, of course, is policy change. We want to reduce the number of obese children in Kansas from one in five to one in six in five years. Quite literally, our goal is to change the statistics of childhood obesity in Kansas. But before we can get to this behavior change stage, we need to promote awareness amongst all our target audiences. To promote awareness, we will have a list of tactics I'll cover later in the presentation. I'm first going to discuss behavior change. Peer-to-peer <laughs> -peer influence is very impactful in decision making. So we, our campaign, needs to encourage coaches, providers, and moms to encourage one another to make healthier decisions for their children. And of course, our third, our third uh, goal is policy change. We hope by 2018 to enact an anti-obesity bill through the state legislature. The idea is that through the implementation of GROW, by 2018, when a bill would reach the floor, we would have plenty of support from both citizens and legislators. The GROW campaign will launch, as Alexandra said, in late August with a GROW launch party held specifically for child care aware coaches of Kansas. The idea, like she said earlier, is to capitalize on National Childhood Obesity Awareness Month in September. At this party, uh, child care aware coaches would be celebrated and they would also receive the cornerstone to our campaign, our grocery bag swag, which our directors Nikki and Jordan will be handing out right now. Please feel free to look through the bags and explore all of the ideas that we've created for you throughout our explanation. So as you can see, the bags themselves are a wonderful reminder providers can use to take with them to the grocery store when they're shopping for foods to make healthy decisions. But it's so much more than that. It's really a toolkit for behavior change amongst all these providers. As you'll see, the first item we have in our bag is a trifold tri pamphlet that explains a central feature of our campaign, the How to Grow Plan. It explains three different methods that providers can use to do simple, easy changes that will help them make healthier decisions for their children. The first is grown-ups. It asks parents and providers to model healthy behaviors for children, to sit at the table with them and eat with them so they can copy what they're doing. The second thing we ask them to do under grown-ups is love yourself. We ask providers to take care of themselves so they can be the best providers they can be for their children. The next part of the plan is groceries, which explains to providers easy ways for them to save time and money when they're shopping for groceries. And the third is group play, which is really fun because it describes activities providers can use to really reinforce the healthy lessons they'll be teaching their children and also engage them in food preparation. The next item in our bag is a contact list. It seems very simple, but this tactic is very effective for audiences in rural areas who might not have access to the internet when they need to contact a, con a child, aware, child care aware coach. Um, as you can see, we've broken it down into four regions, so providers can easily find which region they're in, and they can look at it in a moment's notice whenever they need it right up there on their fridge. The next item within our grocery bag is a grocery list, which seems a bit self-explanatory, but we thought it would help cut down organization and prep time for providers when they're, again, going to the grocery shop. They'd have something tangible they can use to remind them to buy healthy foods when they're there. Something noteworthy about this tactic is that it also indicates certain ingredients that uh, we have listed in our recipes. We'll discuss those later. But that way, they also don't have to plan for the recipe tactic of our grocery bags. The next piece of information in the bag is arguably the most important piece of information for the providers. Uh, as it was alluded to earlier in several other presentations, um, financial cost is the second greatest deterrent to healthy foods. That, that's the reason that uh, healthcare providers, excuse me, child care providers are not buying um, foods right now. It's too expensive. There is a federal program known as CACFP that reimburses providers for structuring healthy meals certain ways. The reason providers aren't using CACFP is because those guidelines are often hard to understand and hard to locate. So of course, we have taken a graphic and made them easy to understand and easy to locate. Again, something tangible they can put on their fridge and reference whenever they're making food for their children. And now for the fun part. These are the tactics that providers can use to engage children. Our research taught us that children remember lessons better when they have an activity to reinforce that lesson. And it, they also learn better when they have something to engage them in food preparation. 
This, as you can see, is the story of the twins, Henry and Hattie, who wake up from daycare and decide, wake up from a nap at daycare and decide that they're really hungry and want to go on an adventure. They decide to go on a picnic and we get to see them pick out healthy foods that they get excited about. And I'm going to read a quick excerpt from this. Henry and Hattie picked a spot for the picnic and spread out their meal happily. They unpacked it all, the fruit, the nuts, the drinks, and the broccoli. They admired the rainbow of food before them, and then they gobbled it up. They ate every crumb, drank all the water, and sipped, and sipped milk from their cups. Another thing we learned in our research was that children engage with mascots, and they relate to them, and they remember them. So we thought this tactic could be especially effective in engaging children in healthy behaviors. The next tactic we have to capitalize on the momentum we started with our bilingual children's book. Did I forget to mention that? <laughs> it's translated into Spanish. How great is that? <laughs> to capitalize on the momentum we've created with our bilingual children's book, we have a placemat, which graphics reflect the daily recommended servings by the government for healthy foods. What's also exciting about this placemat is that it's laminated. So providers can bring dry erase markers and work on it with their kids. They can circle things they're excited about, give them stars for things that they like. The next item we have that engages kids, parents, and providers are our recipe tags. Now, you've seen a lot of recipes throughout presentations today, but what's different about ours is that they're actually gift tags, and they're the communicating link between providers and parents. The idea is that the providers will make these meals with children and then attach these gift tags to the meal, which the children will then be excited to bring to their parents and therefore share with them. So they'll have the grow message and they'll also have an e easy organizational tool. As we've mentioned earlier, that's often a struggle for parents. I'm just going to read a quick caption from our um, recipe tags because they're pretty fun. An outstanding gift for an outstanding parent and water that's almost as fun as you. Almost. <laughs> so as you can see, the grocery bag itself is full of wonderful, exciting ideas. But what's really exciting about the bag and what's truly innovative is that it leverages existing communication amongst our target audiences to deliver our message. The idea is that coaches will get the bags at the launch in late August. They will then deliver those bags to their clients, the whom they regularly meet, the childcare providers, who will then get the activities to the children, who will then share the message with their parents. So it works very effectively and creates a cohesive message across all our audiences. Next, Grow is going to take to the web. GrowKansas.com is going to launch in August, and it will contain all the information that you need to know about Grow. There will be tabs for each of the target audiences, uh, child care providers, moms, and then also a kids tab. Um, the website will also contain PDFs of the brochure and the child's book, as well as the following video. create two social media platforms, Facebook and Twitter. According to our research, Facebook and Twitter are two of the most used uh, social media networks in among our target audiences. Also, we thought it would be smart to connect uh, KAC's Twitter with uh, the Grow Twitter by retweeting each other. That way you can cause uh, co-branding. Next, we've created a radio ad. The radio ad will play two times a week, twice a day during primetime hours. This radio ad is particularly targeted to coaches and moms since they're on the move a lot. Take a listen. All moms know that life can get chaotic, especially when you have three kids under the age of five. At lunchtime, I used to throw together what I thought was easiest and what went over the best with my kids. Then my daycare provider told me that one in five children in Kansas is obese and I realized the importance of good nutrition in my kids' lives. 
She told me about GROW, a program that educates moms and child care providers on kids' healthy lifestyle choices. Check out growkansas.com to learn more about what it means to grow right. Next, we will create Club Homegrown. Club Homegrown is particularly targeted to moms and child care providers. It will connect child care providers uh, online by connecting them and they can tell stories about their day-to-day -day lives. It will also connect moms. We'll create a forum on the website that will let them exchange questions and tactics that they think are the most useful when it comes to raising their children and eating healthy. We also decided to do texting tips. These texting tips will create quick references for child care providers and moms with helpful information on what's nutri nutritional and quick recipes. Our third and final goal is to pass anti-obesity legislation through the Kansas House and Senate in 2018. To do this, KAC is going to need a lot of political clout, and that can be gained by pairing with other organizations. Organizations such as the Kansas Association for the Education of Young Children, the Kansas Rural Center, the Kansas Cabinet and Trust Fund, and the Kansas Health Foundation. We are aware of the recent cuts to the Kansas Health Foundation's budget, and we believe that our campaign can accommodate these financial constraints. Kansas legislators respond to ideas that pinpoint how expensive obesity is for our state. They respond to ideas that show them that the more they reduce obesity, childhood obesity in our state, the less they have to spend. They can be easily reached through email. One of our tactics is an email campaign targeted towards legislators. Uh, we have templates in the plans book. This can be used by KAC staff and can be put on the website so any citizen can send their legislator an email detailing why they're concerned about childhood obesity in Kansas. Finally, we recommend that KAC organizes an advocacy day. We recognize that KAC has a core strength in advocacy, and we think that our grow bags and grow collateral could be easily modified to target legislators, because let's be honest, who doesn't like getting free stuff? <laughs> We think you could use our grow bags along with additional research from the plans book and grow branded collateral to keep the campaign top of mind for Kansas legislators. <laughs> Finally, the budget. As we said before, your campaign will cost around $40,000. The majority <coughs> of this cost comes from three tactics. First, your grocery bag and its associated collateral will cost around $6,500. Printing and distributing the Perfect Picnic Bilingual Children's Coloring Book is around $10,500, and the radio ad is $10,000. And as we mentioned before, your time frame is September of 2015 to September of 2018. In our backyard, obesity and obesity-related illness is on the rise. Obesity is not just a problem, it's an epidemic, and it's only getting worse. Now is the time to stop the trend in Kansas. Now is the time to keep our obese children from becoming our obese adults. Early intervention is essential to prevent children from developing serious health problems later in life. We have the ability to make recess fun again. We have the ability to change our self-conscious kids into our self-confident kids. We have the ability not only to improve the health of obese children, but to improve their quality of life. All of us before you are Kansas kids. <laughs> We were born here, we were raised here, and we care about this state just as much as you do. And I hope that you saw that today in our campaign. Our grocery bags leverage the existing communication among our, tar our target audiences. They're efficient and effective, and for that reason, they will cut through the clutter. Our digital media platforms allow a space where moms, providers, and coaches can connect and collaborate, can share information and advice on healthier decisions they should be making for our children. And last, but certainly not least, our bilingual children's storybook presents characters that children can relate to, remember, and learn from. MRS degree has the skills, the creativity, and the drive to help Kansas Action for Children achieve its vision for a healthier, more nutritious Kansas environment. We hope you'll grow with us. Thank you. And before we open the floor for questions, we also have a gift for our wonderful client, Kansas Action for Children, reflecting our GROW logo. <laughs> Look at the branding. <laughs> Could you tell me how many clients coaches see? Uh, 
we talk to how many clients they see. Um, it depends on the region. Um, they do have, uh, it, de it really depends on the region and if they're targeting centers or home child care providers. Um, they t have a lot of clients. They'll do household visits at least twice a week, and then they're in the office the rest of the week. Um, I couldn't give you a specific number just because it varies from person to person. Okay. So it seems like we're depending a lot on the coaches in this campaign to distribute materials and, and share these things with their clients. How do you get their buy-in on that? It seems like that would be us, and then we're asking them to do it. Well, I think one, the reason why we came up with it, one was with the partnership with uh, Child Care Aware. Um, we thought it was really strong. Uh, the launch party is to start them off feeling positive and making them inspired to change the environment in Kansas. Um, it goes into more detail in the plans book, but it's kind of, we look into the vision of what we see children in Kansas looking like. Um, from then, I think Child Care Aware coaches are really de dedicated to helping the lives of Kansas children. Um, and a lot of the same ideas that we go to for providers can be connected to these coaches. A lot of these coaches used to be providers and they want to see Kansas children uh, growing up in a healthy world. And so I think uh, they would buy in just because it's such an important and impactful campaign. And just to add to that, I think it's important that we acknowledge uh, the existing communication between the coaches and the providers. They're often very close to them. They talk a lot. They communicate often. Uh, so why not use the communication that's there already and that trust that's already there built? One last thing to add on to that answer. Sorry. It's very comprehensive. Um, we mentioned this earlier. We talked to Marie Treichel from Child Care Aware. And oftentimes, uh, the coaches use gifts to get inside the door. It helps them start a dialogue. So I think a tangible thing like a grocery bag with lots of things inside would be really exciting for them, something they definitely rally behind. another one. Um, your campaign also did not incorporate the Kansas Action for Children brand. Um, can you talk about why you chose not to do that? Um, first of all, as another group mentioned, um, when we met with you uh, at the very beginning of the semester, uh, you mentioned that Kansas Action for Children uh, can have an interesting and sometimes contentious relationship with the conservative Kansas legislators because conservative legislators are not a fan of social programs um, often in the state of Kansas. And uh, I think what we wanted to do was make sure that we have a campaign that is completely focused on the health and wellness of Kansas children and not focused on something that a legislator could latch on to, say, that, oh, I've worked with Kansas Action for Children before. That doesn't matter. This isn't about what your relationship with that organization is. It's about what you want for Kansas children. So that's why we wanted to focus our campaign entirely on that. That's it. Thank you very much. Is it for me? Is it for me? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this screen a little bit, and I would like to welcome our client to come up the, here to do a final presentation. I think I'm going to. Jeremy, do you mind if we turn on the lights here? Thank you very much. I thought all the applause was for me. <laughs> But then for the last group, now I feel a bit hurt deep down inside. I would like to welcome Lauren Bitti. If you'd like to come up here to share your final thoughts with everyone and your impression in general. And please be frank. We do, we do learn much more by getting honest feedback. Remember, that's what we've been doing all semester long. Well, I'm going to keep this really short and sweet. Um, I just, first of all, want to thank the stars above that I was a news info person and I did never <laughs> had to do this because I, you guys put in a ton of work and I could have never done it. So congratulations to all of you. I want to thank you all for your hard work. I can't wait to take all of this and pass it off as my own ideas. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, we asked you to think outside the box. We asked you to think about Kansas kids, which is what we do every day. And you did um, in spades. And so we just, from all of us, we thank you. We are so impressed. And congratulations. Good luck on finals. Rock chalk. <laughs> thank you. Our last time together in person. 
It's not really, I know a lot of you are not graduating. So let's just hold, hold back our tears. It has, it's been such a wonderful and interesting semester. I actually would like to introduce or just share with you my first campaign client, the Compton Historical Society president, Mr. Paul Baumeyer is actually in attendance today. I wanted to acknowledge him in part because he has been so important in my very first campaign teaching experience. And I believe our four representatives from KEC really help establish and continue that smooth path of my teaching career. So for that, I'm very grateful. And I'm very grateful to you as well, Mr. Baumeyer. Our last one. Did you get the letter I gave, put you put on the table? Teaching, it's not really much of, it's, it's not really just about imparting knowledge onto you. But I have to say, a good teacher perhaps will say, students teach us as much as we teach you perhaps. It's always a learning process. You never know how many times I knock on Professor Tian Lee's door, our track chair, who is still here, amazingly. <laughs> oh, creativity. How can we impart creativity and think outside the box and think, think, think? And I know throughout the semester, I've been very, very, very critical of each other's work. I always ask you, come on, go back, edit, write with one voice. Where's, why do you still have two spaces in between sentences when the rest of them is like one space in between? <laughs> I will also add your numbers up. This budget doesn't match up the other budget. And I told you that your credibility will go down really quickly if you're not careful. And really, this is really a reminder for you, but also a reminder for myself as a teacher to be more careful about what we do in campaigns. So I hope that this is a wonderful journey for you. And this indeed is a very wonderful journey for me as a teacher. And I have all the faith in all of you, that you just make our Kansas children's lives a little bit brighter and better. Thank you so much for a wonderful semester and celebrate <laughs> safely. If possible, I'd like to request a photo with everyone, but I don't have cell phones, so I, someone has to do the photo thing. Oh yes, that's mine. Can we have a photo with all of our clients if that's okay?